Welcome to my Chemical Golf. So finally, finally, we're getting a hint that the sun is coming out, the temperatures are going up, and hopefully the rain is reducing. Can't say it's totally going because there's no chance if you live in the UK. So anyway, but it is the golf season is fast approaching. We've had the Players Championship, which was awesome, and now we've got the Masters just round the corner, which is the real start of the season. So right. Where the golf course has been quite wet, main bit that's been highlighted from a lot of people to myself is to strike the contact, which is hugely important. So you're trying to stay within uh, a spectrum, so not too extreme. So you won't move in like a one dimension, you're moving like three dimensions. So we don't want to make it too complicated, but you're trying to stay within, like I said, the spectrum, you're not doing a move that's too extreme. So you've got Number one is the lift, so down and up. So you drop and you lift up, drop down and lift up. So imagine if you're in an elevator and you're shooting down and you decide not to stop the lift and you try and jump out onto that floor. So unless you're Tom Cruise and that, that's gonna be pretty difficult. So that has to be limited. That has to be just a couple of inches at the, at the most rather than a massive drop down. So everyone's got a camera, so on the phone, just the one thing that you need to do is put it on the tripod. Doesn't matter how steady you think you are, if, you, if you're holding it, you can't use the lines. And it's quite straightforward. You can just put a, a rectangle around yourself and you'll see if you're dropping or not. Just put yourself in a, in a box and then swing back. So if you're over ambitious with the turn, so you do a big, big shoulder turn, you're in danger that this the lead knee, that hip would collapse. So as you do that big turn, you're dropping right down. Now you've got to try and get back up to get that club back on the ball. So that's one to look out for. And the main bit there you've potentially done is try to turn too far with the upper back. And as you've done that, and you've got to try to get a big reach up, this is all collapse. So push that knee, back out so it comes in just slightly, you'll reduce the hip turn and the length of the swing will be shorter, but you'll maintain a consistent height. Next one is to sway. So that's away towards the target, away and towards the target. So that way, so if I'm hitting it that way, we're talking about a sway. So then suddenly, so you're trying to put the box around yourself again, and at the most, at the most, you're trying to keep it under the three inches, so you're in the two inches. So if you're swaying over that two mark, so you sway three inches, you've got to get then back to the ball. So all of a sudden you could be moving up to like eight inches, which is a tremendous shift of trying to get the club back onto the ball. And if one particular movement is dominating too much it will take out the rotation so you'll probably get stuck on the back foot flip it round to the left or then try and push it out to the right so then you've got a two-way miss so that lead leg needs to man up a little bit so as you're swinging back you're trying to get the pressure onto the inside of the foot ideally going back towards the heel so losing your glute using the quad the hip flexor so you can feel that resistance so again, that will restrict the length of your backswing, so it'll be a bit shorter. But you're trying to maintain that position. So the central mass is staying fairly centered, and we're moving a pressure point to that back foot. We're not moving weight to the back foot. So that feel that resistance. The angle of the trail foot, don't turn it out too much, just one digit to the right of 12 o'clock. That will open up the hip flexor, but give you a little bit of resistance and you'll still be able to turn through. So you need to check out if you're dropping, so up and down, or if you're swaying. The other one is towards the ball, so we're early extending. So we're going towards the ball, and then we have to go back up to try and get it back onto the club. Otherwise, we're gonna shank it. If you then go right up, because the bottom mask come miles forward, the strike will then move to the toe. So same again, put yourself in that box, make sure the line's going down your glue and you're turning 
and you're loading into that hip flexor. So you're sitting into that glute. You feel the pressure this time, keep it on the inside of the foot and it's moving to the heel. So then you haven't swung back and moved forward. You're in trouble then straight away before you've even started a downswing. So if you're struggling with that strike, check out which one is potentially causing that mishit. So you've got the lift, you've got the sway, so away from the target or towards the target too much, towards the ball and the lift. So if you it, just reduce that to within a spectrum. So if you're trying to stay within that two inch, so you're not moving more than two inches. So if you're, as soon as you're up to that three, four inches, that's very difficult to coordinate and get a consistent strike on the ball. So where the fairways have been wet and it's very punishing, that's the bit that you need to make sure you've got in sync. And as the weather gets better, you've got your strike spot on, it will make a huge difference to your distance and make you a better golfer. Any questions or comments, please send them through. Give us a good thumbs up and I'll see you soon.